Okay, so we're going to talk about buffers. And so let's talk a little bit about the theory. You make a solution by dissolving sodium acetate, right? So that's NaC2H3O2 in water. And it is extremely soluble. All acetates are very soluble. So this is not an equilibrium, this is a full dissociation. So it becomes Na plus and acetate. And it's 100% product favor, like all here. And now we add some acetic acid to the solution. So here's the dissociation there. All right, we already know this plus H2O, which isn't participating in anything other than being our part of the, the base. Now, let's think back to Le Chatelier's principle, right? Le Chatelier's principle says if you add a product, equilibrium shifts away from that product, right? Shifts toward three reactants. So if you already have acetate in our solution, and I am adding a reaction that also produces acetate, that's essentially the same thing as increasing a product, increasing the concentration of a product. So which way is equilibrium going to be? Position going to be on the reactants, or is the equilibrium position going to be on the products? If we add an acetate, because acetate was already in there, it shifts towards the reactants, right? And so let me ask you this, if the equilibrium is over here on the reactant side, could I, is that possible to affect pH? If I didn't make any H3O plus, does that affect pH? No, it doesn't. So that's the neat trick behind how a buffer works. Okay, the common ion effect occurs when the solution contains an ion that you uh, are trying to dissolve. We'll see this next week when we do solubility products. Like I said, all this stuff's the exact same thing. It's all the same. It's the same. It never changes, right? Next week when we do solubility product, we're going to look at solubility and how well things dissolve. And if the solution contains an ion that you're trying to dissolve more of, well, guess what? That ion's not going to dissolve, right? Because think back to Le Chatelier's principle. If you increase the concentration of a product, equilibrium goes away from it, right? Equilibrium goes to this side. So if I have got this common ion here, equilibrium shifts over here, and if I can't add H3O plus, then I can't add the pH, I can't change the pH. And that's the idea, okay? A buffer is a solution that is resistant to change in pH. Tolerates it pretty well, I should say. And so yesterday in lab when you were working on that, right, some of those shot straight up to 14 right away, especially the control, right? It was not buffered. Whereas other ones, tolerated it better. Now there is a maximum. You can't just keep adding this forever, right? You can max out your buffer. So it's not like you can just do this infinitely. But if you've got the equilibrium away from hydronium, then you cannot, by definition, change the pH. And that's what you want. That's the goal of buffer. All right, so a buffer is composed of a weak acid. It must be a weak acid. And it's conjugate base. It must be a weak acid. Why can't you use a strong acid? Well, if you use a strong acid, a strong acid fully dissociates. There's no equilibrium to shift because the equilibrium is stuck here on the products and it's not going anywhere. Okay, so you can never use a strong acid. It must be a weak. Make sure you emphasize that, okay? It must be a weak acid. And then you need to have the conjugate base in there as well because that's your common ion, right? So we're treating that like our common ion. So that if it's already in there, we're not going to get any more to dissolve. Does this make sense? Make sense? So we actually did a, a calculation of buffer pH yesterday in lab. So I'm not going to go through all of them because I think that I've got a sample and there's one for you to try. I'll go through that sample one again just for review. But uh, I don't think I'll need to spend too much time on it. I mentioned this yesterday too. What are some real world buffers? What's the one that's 
critically important to us as living things? Blood. Your blood, right? Your blood is buffered, right? Think about, think about oxygenation process, right? Or likewise, if your cells are dumping CO2, that's a waste product into your blood. Well, you don't want your carbonic, that's what CO2 dissolves and makes carbonic acid. You don't want your blood pH dropping dramatically. That would be bad, right? Even inside a cell, individual cell is buffered, right? So in living things, blood and you know, intracellular fluids, that sort of thing. And then even commercial applications, like if you ever look at your soaps, your shampoos, that sort of thing, they're buffered as well um, to prevent bacteria from growing. So there are a lot of buffers out there. Let's just do this one as a review, and then I think we can go from there. You make a buffer from equal volumes of 0.55 molar sodium acetate and 0.45 molar acetic acid. What's the pH of this buffer? You're going to need to pull out your handout with your Ka values unless you've got them committed to memory. All right, this is sodium acetate and acetic acid. So we're gonna use the dissociation equation for acetic acid, right? H, C2, H3, O2, H2O, H3, O plus, C2, H3, O2. And the Ka for this, 1.8, times 10 to the negative fifth, I believe. Double checking, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay, it tells me that it's 0.55 molar sodium acetate. So that's why it goes here. Now normally, remember when we were doing just what's the pH of an acid, this would be zero, right? If I said what's the pH of acetic acid 0.45 molar, you would just make this zero, but this isn't a pH of just a straight up acid. This is the pH of a buffer. Buffer has salt in there and it's got the acid in there. Does everybody understand why this value is 0.45 and why this value down here is not zero? This is important, right? Because if you, if you put this as zero, you're calculating the pH of an acetic acid solution. You're not calculating the pH of a buffer. Make sure you understand the difference, right? Buffers contain salt. That's why yesterday in lab, right, you made the salt component, I made the acid component, you put them together and you made your buffer that way. This is not participating and this is still zero initially. All right, so this goes down by X. We're gonna make the 5% approximation. This isn't liquid, who cares? This is gonna go up by X. This is gonna go up by X as well. But remember, if we can make the 5% approximation and say that, hey, X is so small, that this value essentially doesn't change, then we can also make a 5% approximation and say, hey, X is so small that this value also doesn't change. Does everybody understand how we set this up? This is very similar to the one we did in the beginning of lab yesterday. All right, so now we just say to ourselves, okay, Ka is equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of acetate, over the concentration of acetic acid. So let's plug in our values, right? So 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to X times 0.55 divided by 0.45. Does everyone see how we just plug these values in? No quadratic equation to solve, right? Because you made the 5% approximation times two. So you do your rearranging. I got X equals 1.47 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that is my H3O plus concentration, right? So how would I then make, take the pH? How could I get pH? Just take the negative log of that, right? So pH is negative log of 1.47 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I got 4.83. <clears throat> same thing, over and over and over and over, over. You're just doing the same thing all over, right? The only difference between a weak acid calculation and a buffer calculation is that the buffer contains the salt. The weak acid, this would be zero. If I just say, what's the pH of a 0.45 molar acetic acid solution? This would be zero, this would be zero. 
But if I say, what's the pH of a buffer containing 0.45 acetic acid and whatever acetate, I have to give you this concentration, right? You can't just make something up. I have to tell you. That's why this value is not zero. Does this make sense? Yes. Weak acid and its conjugate base. Both of them have to be there in order to have a buffer. Now on your handout, I've got one for you to try. We're just skip over that because I think between the demo, the sample I did yesterday and this one, I think you'll be fine. I really want to get through these calculations. Now if you skip onto the back, but there are two equations of interest. Let's zoom this in. I want the camera to be able to pick it up. I guess it helped if I erased, huh? So these are two equations, and they'll be on your reference sheet. If you've got a weak acid reaction, right? Here's the generic weak acid equation dissociation. There's Ka, right? If you rearrange this, just do some algebra, rearrange for concentration of H3O plus, right? You get H3O plus equals Ka times HA over A minus. That's a formula you could use, right? That's a, that's a valid formula that works. If you think back to our ice table, what we did just a second ago, Right, you know you have your I, C, E, I think this value was 0.45 and this value was 0.55, right? And we said to ourselves 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to, and then just think about what we did. Oh, and this is X. 0.55X over 0.45. You're just rearranging for X. That's what you have here, right? That's literally from the ice table, just rearranging it. Now, those of you who know your log rules, if you take the negative log of everybody and then apply your log rules, you get this one. It's called the henderson hasselbach equation. So again, this just takes you directly from your ice table to pH. Just make sure, how do you get pKa? Negative log, right? So if the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, you'd need to take the negative log of it. And then you take <clears throat> excuse me, the log of A minus over HA. So if you've got your ice table, you can just plug and chug like you've always done, and that will work. you get a valid answer to be exactly the same. Or you could use one of these equations. you get the same answer, no matter what, okay, if you do it correctly. Do you understand these two equations? Because I'm going to start using them. And so I want to make sure you understand them before I start using them too. Are we good? All right. So now we know how to calculate the pH of a buffer. A buffer is only interesting to us if we start adding acid or adding base. So let's talk about what happens when we add acid or base. All right, the generic reaction for any acid plus any base, when they neutralize each other, acid plus base produces water and salt. Right, acid plus base produces water and salt. So for instance, if you had, let's just use a strong acid, HCl and NaOH, this is probably the one you learned in high school. Right, water is your product, and then NaCl is your pro other pro salt. This is a very, very classic high school experiment. You know, titrate is strong acid. I do this in intro chem, I do it all the time, right? probably seen this before, I'm guessing, I'm hoping, <laughs> right? Acid plus base makes water and a salt, okay? And so when we are doing a buffer calculation, we need to keep this in mind because any base that we add will react with the acid component of the buffer, and any acid that we add will react with the base component of the buffer because the base, the acid and the base are both present in the buffer so that any acid I add can get consumed and any base that I add can get consumed, and the pH doesn't change a whole lot. Now, obviously, you can overwhelm your buffer and add so much that your buffer starts going crazy. But if you add small amounts, like you saw yesterday in lab, if you add small amounts to a good buffer, the pH doesn't really change a whole lot until you max it out, when you uh, exceed its buffering capacity. All right, so let's talk about 
calculating pH after adding a strong base, which is what you did yesterday in lab. Calculating pH after addition of a strong base. So what's adding a strong base going to do? Is it going to make pH increase or decrease? If the pH changes at all, it will increase, right? So I've written the steps for you here. First of all, you need to find the concentration of the base that you added, if it's not already given. Right? Yesterday in lab, you were adding a solution, so that concentration was one molar, I believe. But if I didn't give you the molarity, let's say I told you five grams and a 100 liter sample, right? you have to convert grams to moles and divide by the bottom. Write the net ionic equation, figure out your new concentrations, and then use one of these equations, um, Henderson, Hasselbach, etc., or make a second dice table. All right, let's go through an example. I'm going to zoom in so that the camera picks up. Now, on your handout, I put 0 0.02 grams. Oops, camera's definitely not going to pick that up. I guess that's too zoomed out. 0.02 grams is a really small number. It's not going to affect the pH enough to make a difference. So let's change that to 2 grams. 2.0 grams. I want it to be enough that you see a difference. All right, a buffer is made using 0.45 molar lactic acid and 0.3 molar lithium acetate. Calculate the pH when 2 grams of sodium hydroxide is added to 2 liters of the solution. All right, real quickly, real quickly, let's just calculate <clears throat> what the pH of this buffer is before any acid, I mean, any base goes in, just so we can have a frame of reference, right? So let's just use Henderson Hasselbach real quick. All right, so let's see. The Ka for this is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. So my initial pH, I'm just putting this here for a frame of reference. My initial pH is 3.85 plus 0 0.30 over 0.45. That's log. So my initial pH is 3.67. Right, so that's just where we're starting from. Just so that we have a frame of reference. Okay, the problem didn't ask me to calculate the initial pH. I'm just doing it so you can know where we're starting. Because if I say the new pH is 7, you wouldn't have any way of knowing, well, is this a good buffer or a lousy buffer, unless you know what it was before you did anything. Okay, so we're just going to stick this off to the side here. My initial is 3.67. Okay, so I just plugged into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation there real quick. All right, now let's go through our steps. <laughs> we need to find the concentration that I added. All right, so this is two grams. Can I use grams in a concentration ever? No, right? What does grams need to be changed to? Moles, right? So 39.99 grams per mole. So that gives me 0 0.05 moles. And now this is a 2 liter sample, so divide that by 2.0 liters, right? Why am I dividing by 2? Because molarity is moles per liter, right? You can't have a molarity unless you have a mole component and a volume component. So that's 0 0.025 molar. So that's the amount of hydroxide, that's the concentration that I added, right? Yesterday in lab, you just did a number of moles, well, you'll have to do this in your calculation to figure out number of moles and go back and do your stoic geometry. All right, so let's write our dissociation equation. Lactic acid is HC3H5O3. Now, acid is reacting with, did I add acid or did I add base? Is NaOH an acid or a base? It's a base, right? So it's gonna react with the acid component. Acid plus base, what are my two products going to be? Oops, not plus. Equals. 
And this is not equilibrium. Acid plus base makes this and this get together. What's that? Water, right? It's a liquid. And then salt is it's just sodium acetate, I mean sodium lactate. And A, C3H5O3. Now, if we were to do the dissociation, like we learned last semester, remember we did net ionic equations, right? If we wrote the net ionic equation, what we would find is that sodium's the spectator. Okay, sodium's the spectator. Because if you dissociate this, you dissociate this, you leave that alone, you dissociate this, the only thing you can cross out is sodium. Because you actually only have the sodium that works for you here. So I'm just writing the net ionic equation, and the reason I'm doing that is because this looks an awful lot like an ice table, right? It is, it is. We're gonna make ourselves a little ice table here. Okay, so let's make ourselves an ice table. A buffer is made using 0.45 molar lactic acid, so this is 0 0.45. And we just figured out how much hydroxide, the molarity there is 0 0.025. How many sick things can I keep? Actually, I can't keep this zero here, can I? Two sick things. All right. This is a liquid, and what's the concentration here of lactate? 0.3. Does everyone see where the I row came from? This came from the problem, this came from the problem, and I calculated how much I added. Because acid plus base makes water and salt. Okay, now the base is going to fully react which means it's gonna go all the way down to zero. So this needs to be minus 0 0.025, so that at equilibrium, this one's zero. So if this goes down by 0 0.025, what's this one gonna do? Go down by 0 0.025. And if this one goes down by 0 0.025, what's this one gonna do? Go up. Okay, does everybody understand? how we made these modifications to our ice table. All right, so this becomes 0 0.425, which we should probably round to 0.3. So we can only keep one decimal place there. And this is going to be 0 0.325, which will then round to 0 0.33, right? One decimal place I can keep, one decimal place I keep. All right, now we look back at our equations here. You can use the first one, H3O plus is equal to Ka times HA over A minus. That works. Or you can use Henderson Hasselbach, pH is equal to pKa plus log A minus over HA. I don't care which one you use. Makes no difference to me. All right, so I did, I'll, I'll do, which one do you, which one do you uh, think you'll be more likely to choose? Anyone have a, have a choice? We already have the pKa from the initial, so I'm just gonna use the, the Henderson also. All right, so pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus over HA. All right, so the pKa is 3.85. And how did I get that 3.85? I used the Ka, right? Just took the negative log plus the log of A minus, which is 0 0.33 over 0 0.43, okay? So I got 3.74. My initial pH was 3.67. Now, let's compare where I was initially to where I am now. Remember that the pH scale is logarithmic. It's log base 10, right? So if you go up one pH unit, what does that do to the pH? That increases the pH by one times, five times, 10 times, 100 times what? 10 times, right? So if you go from 
three to four, that's a 10 times increase in pH. Here we went from 3.67 to 3.74. So is that a huge change in pH? No, no it's not a huge change in pH. Now, again, it depends on the environment that you're working with, whether or not that's a big deal or not, right? Because in some environments, maybe the pH cannot budge from there. And so you need a buffer that's so precise that you can't, you don't want that buffer to budge at all. Right? And we'll talk about how to pick a good buffer versus a lousy buffer uh, at the end of this. Does everyone understand how to do this? All right, I think I've got one for you to try. Yes, I do. On the next side, next page. I've given you the composition of the buffer, and I want you to calculate the initial pH and then calculate the pH after addition of base so that you can decide is this a good buffer or not. <coughs> you make a buffer using equal volumes of 0.8 molar hydrofluoric acid in sodium fluoride, what's the initial pH? And then what's the pH after adding 0.1 moles of solid potassium hydroxide to 950 milliliters? Is this buffer good? Yes or no? So I'll pause the recording and give you a chance to try that. All right, let's go over this one. So calculate the initial pH. Here's a nice little trick, maybe you notice this. If the concentration of the acid and the conjugate base is the same, what is the pH? It's not zero. The pH is just the pKa, right? Because if it's pH equals pKa plus log of A minus over AA, log of one is zero. So the pH is just equal to the pKa if these two concentrations equal each other. So the initial pH, I got 3.17. Did you? Because you had to look up the Ka, right? The Ka is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. It's the Ka. So when the initial concentrations of these two are the same, you know, a nice little trick because that goes away. So the pH is just the pKa. So that's always fun. All right, now let's do the calculation of. I'll write this over here. pH initials. All right, what is the pH after adding one mole of solid potassium hydroxide? All right, I'm thinking I just, uh, did I do my calculation correctly here? I think I used the molar mass of Sodium hydroxide, when I did my calculation here, I'm just not going to get it on my book. Let's find out. Oh, wait, we don't need a molar mass because it's already in moles. Never mind. All right. So the concentration of hydroxide, I gave you moles, so it doesn't matter. 0 0.10 moles. And what about this volume here? That's got to go to liters. Got to convert it to liters. So how many liters is that? 0 0.95. All right, so I got 0 0.11 molar. Do we agree there? No. Okay, now, this is a base, so it's going to react with the acid component of the buffer, right? So the acid component of the buffer is the HF. And we're adding, we don't care about this cation, so we're just going to ignore it, right? We're adding hydroxide ion. We're producing water and fluoride. Right, because who cares if it's potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, who cares, right? That's just the spectator. Do we agree on the chemistry of what happens? The base that we add reacts with the acid component. All right, so let's set up our ice table. So HF is 0.8. This we just calculated 0 0.11, who cares? This is also 0 0.8. Okay, this goes what? What happens to the hydroxide? It goes all the way down to zero, right? So 0 0.11, so this is minus 0 0.11, and this is plus 0 0.11. Do we agree here? 
Yep, so this is, what do we get down here? 0 0.69, and then there we get 0 0.91. Okay, so if you use Henderson Hasselbach or if you use the other one, it makes no difference. So pH plus pKa plus log A minus, which is 0 0.91 over 0 0.69. So I got. 3.29. Now, if your final answer varies based on that last digit, it could be because of rounding. 3.17 to 3.29. Is that a good buffer? It's pretty good. Again, it all depends on the, the, the error, the margin that you want to keep that pH in. Right? If your experiment is so, so, so set that this can't budge off of 3.2, well, then you're probably in trouble. But if your pH could vary in the tens, then you're okay. It depends on why you're buffering and what you're trying to keep the buffer to do. How do we feel about adding base to buffer? So this is the kind of calculation you're going to need to do in your lab analysis, right? Because if you look ahead, there's a section where I said, okay, calculate what the pH should have been when you had all these additions and compare that to what the pH was when you had all these additions. So experimental versus actual, right? All right, now let's shift gears and let's talk about what happens when we add acid to a buffer. Because if we add base to a buffer, we can, if we can add base to a buffer, we can add acid to a buffer as well. So let's look at that. When we add a strong acid, is that gonna cause the pH to go up, go down, what? If it changes at all, it should decrease, right? Maybe our buffer is so good that pH doesn't change at all. Maybe, maybe maybe. Now we're adding a strong acid, so that means we're adding H3O plus. We're gonna write our net ionic equation, find our new concentrations, and then plug them into Henderson Hasselbach or plug them into a second ice table. And you can, you can make a whole new ice table and do the math again. It's not really worth the effort, I think, but if that works for you, then do it. All right, so let's do this one. Now it's going to be a little bit different when you add acid because it's a, it's a different kind of chemistry. All right, so let's see. The pKa here, excuse me, the Ka here. Oh, I didn't even write it down on my handout. That's okay. So calculate the initial pH of the buffer. So here pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus over HA. So I got 3.67. Do I need to show you that arithmetic or are you okay if I just tell you? If anyone wants me to show you the arithmetic, I'll be happy to do it. Yes, no? You good on calculating the initial pH of a buffer? Yes, okay. All right, what's more interesting <coughs> is what happens to the pH when we add acid. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much acid did we add. So what's the concentration of the H3O plus that we added? All right, so here's where you need to just pay attention. Remember, molarity is equal to moles over liters, right? So we want moles, we want liters. So let's first get moles. So think back to last semester. Molarity times volume gives you number of moles, right? So convert milliliters to liters. So 0 0.0200 liters times 1.0 mole per liter. So here the molarity is one, so who cares? Okay, that's the numerator, right? That's the number of moles. Now the thing to watch for is in this volume, you want V total. You want this volume and this volume added together. Okay, so it's not 500 anymore, it's 520. Okay. Look at that and make sure you understand how that came into being. Molarity is equal to moles over liters. 
I didn't give you mass. It's like I said, you weighed out 17 grams and dissolved it in a liter, right? I didn't do that. Normally when you add acid, it's a solution and you're just pouring it in, okay? So you take the volume times the molarity and that gives you number of moles. And right here the molarity is one, so who cares? It's not gonna change the number, just the units. The volume needs to be total volume because you've got to factor in the volume of acid and the fact that you took a 500 milliliter sample. Does everybody understand how we got this molarity? All right, so I got 0 0.038 molar. Do we agree? Do we understand how we do this? Okay, now, Let's look at what's gonna happen. If we're adding acid, which part of the buffer is it going to react with? The acid component or the base component? Does acid react with acid? Acid's gonna react with the base component, right? So the base component is that A minus, right? That's the, that's the conjugate base. So the base is, this is the formate ion. So CHO2 minus, that's the formate. Right? It reacts with that H3O plus that we added. Okay? Acid plus base is still going to make water and salt. So we're going to get our H2O back, liquid. And then we're going to get our acid. And you're basically just doing the whole thing backwards. H, C, H, O, 2. In other words, this is the reverse of our normal acid dissociation equation. Right? Normally you have acid plus water gives me base and conjugate base and H3O plus. We're doing it backwards, it's just going the other direction. This is probably the hardest part here. Figuring out your molarity and then setting up the dissociation, right? setting up the reaction. Once you've set it up, then it's just a normal ice table as usual. So let's do this ice table, I, C, E. All right, formate is 0.6 molar. This we added is 0 0.038. Okay, what's gonna happen to this? Is it gonna, it's gonna what? Go all the way down to zero, just like with it when we added a base. So this is gonna fully react, so this is gonna be zero. So if this goes down by 0 0.038, this is also going to go down by 0 0.038, which means this was 0.7 molar. What's going to happen here? It's going to go up by 0 0.038, okay? And so our equilibrium va values are 0 0.56, because we can only keep one decimal place, and 0 0.738, which we have around 0.74, right? Because we can only keep one decimal place. Once we have our E value of the ice table, which we do, can we plug into Henderson Hasselbalch now? Or you can do the HGO plus equals, in other words, Ka plus HA over A minus. That one works too. I like Henderson Hasselbalch because we've already got the pKa from our pH calculation up here. So pH is equal to pKa plus log A minus over HA. So pKa is 3.74 plus log of 0 0.56 over 0 0.74. So I got 3.62. The pH went down. That's what you would expect when you add acid. Is this a good buffer? Yeah, that's a really good buffer. Right? Okay. Very small modification. But the pH, if it's gonna change at all, when you add acid, it should go down. If you add acid and somehow your pH goes up, you made a problem in your math somewhere. Okay, because always ask yourself if your answer is reasonable. If you add base and your pH goes down, that's a problem. Right? Adding base should make your pH go up. And if you add acid and your pH goes up, that's a problem because adding acid should make your pH go down. 
How do we feel about adding acid? He said, students tend to struggle with it a little bit more just because you have to deal with the molarity and the volume concept rather than just converting grams to moles, right? You need to just think back to how do I get moles? Molarity times volume. And then divide that by the total volume because you have to factor in the volume that you added as well. You ready to try one for yourself? On the next page, I've got one for you to try. Is it okay for me to erase this? Video will go up this afternoon if you need to go back and check it out. And these problems are different from the ones in the lecture video, so that's good. Gives you different ones to look at. So why don't you try this one? You go in the lab and prepare a buffer using 0.95 molar hydrocyanic acid and 0.90 molar sodium cyanide. What's the initial pH of the buffer? And then what's the pH after we add 35 milliliters, 1.5 molar acid to a 600 milliliter sample? All right, let's go over this one. So initial pH of the buffer, just for good measure, let's go through how to calculate that. I don't wanna just assume, zoom through it real quick. All right, so let's go through the process. HCN is my acid, combination with water, produces H3O plus, oops, yes, that's right, and CN minus. Okay, so this is 0.95 molar minus X, about 0 0.95, 0 plus X, X, and then this is 0 0.90 plus X, about 0 0.90. The KA for this, I don't even know. I didn't write it down. What's the KA for this? 4.9. All right. So like I said, if you can do this in your head and just jump straight to henderson hasselbach that's fine. Just show me the henderson hasselbach at least. You don't need to show me the ice table. If you just show me henderson hasselbach or the other version, that's fine. All right, so pH is equal to pKa plus log. A minus over HK. So I got 9.31 plus negative 0 0.023. So I got 9.29. That's my initial pH. Do we agree? That's the initial pH? Okay. So we're going to have acid added. Is that going to make the pH, if it changes at all, go up, go down? What? If it changes at all, the pH should decrease. So let's figure out what amount of acid we add. So H3O plus that we add, molarity times volume, so one, two, three, right? 0 0.0350 liters times 1.5 moles per liter divided by the total volume, which is 600 and plus 35, right? So 0 0.635 liters. So I got the molarity of the acid to be 0 0.0875 molar. Do we agree there? All right, now let's write our reaction. The acid that we add is going to react with the base component. The base component is the cyanide ion. So CN minus plus that H3O plus is going to give us back our water and our HCN. Do we agree there? Because remember, sodium is just a spectator. We don't care. It's not interesting. All right. So we are going to plug in our values, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, this is 0 0.0875, who cares, and this is 0.95. All right, this is going to go down, 0 0.0875. This is going to go. Oh, because I wrote it incorrectly. Thank you. 
This one's 0 0.90. I looked at the wrong number. Thank you. All right, so my values 0 0.813, so that's 0 0.81, and this is 1.04. So pH is equal to pKa plus log A minus over HA, so I got 9.20. My initial pH was 9.29. So is that a decent buffer? Pretty good. Pretty good buffer. Pretty good. All right, there's one last thing. It'll take me 20 seconds to talk about it. Maybe not 20 seconds, maybe 35. We just need to talk about it quickly because I know it's on the homework on this stuff. So if you're working ahead over the weekend, I want you to. We have all the homework. That is awesome. I have to do during spring break, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so if I want to make a buffer of a specific pH, I want my buffer to be pH 4, I want my buffer to be pH 2, I want my buffer to be pH 7, right? How do I prepare a buffer? Choose an acid that has a pKa close to the pH where you want the solution to stay, okay? Maximum buffering occurs when pH equals pKa. So for instance, I want a pH 4.3 buffer, and these are the only acids that I have available. Which one works best? So how would I turn a Ka into a pKa? You just take the negative log. So when you do that, the pKa here is 2.87, pKa here is 4.89, 4.19, and 7.46. So if these are the only ones I had to choose from, and I want the pH to be 4.3, and this is all I had to choose from, I'd pick benzoic acid. Right. The buffer, maximum buffering occurs when the pH equals the pKa. Now, don't forget about buffering capacity. Right. This is the ability of the buffer to resist pH. Yesterday in lab, when you maxed out the buffer, right, when its pH shot way up, you've exceeded its buffering capacity. All right, so that's where we're going to end. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you on Friday.